employees contribute to their their destiny, their 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 collective bargaining commitment to that. Um, how about you? Okay. Get that negotiated and accepted. Yeah, you still have to negotiate it. I did at the county as well, where I, I've had some of my uh, employee unions have, have agreed to it, others have not. What we did as a fallback, we said it applied to all of our non-represented employees, all of our non-union employees. We settled with three of our unions. We've still got a couple left. In fact, the biggest one asked me, which politically is not going to settle on anything till after next Tuesday, because for them, they don't want me to get any, any anything of value before the election. Um, but what I did, and I did it again in this budget, is say, Here's what my expectation is, very realistic, realistic wage and benefit reforms. Um, and if we don't get it, you know, we didn't build the budget on furloughs, but we said as a fallback in those, for those employees who are in collective bargaining units where they do not settle for what we're asking for in the budget, again, this is at the county level, so we put as a fallback furloughs in there. Um, with the idea being that the employees are stepping up and helping us both those non-union employees as well as those unions that have settled, they shouldn't be punished when they're already helping to contribute balance to the budget. We'd approach a similar strategy for the state. Okay. Because then that's, that's, your, that's your, really your, your mechanism to say, if you want to help us, or, and, and we're, we're not locked in saying it has to be exactly the same. If they get back and said, well, instead of this, we'll contribute at this level, and we'll do something else to change our wellness program or something like that. They'll save money. Assuming it added up, we're willing to work on, on that. Bring a, put a baseball bat. That's what I do. <laughs> I have one in my office. You'll be happy with that. <laughs> i got a slugger with my name on it. We're not going to compromise. I'm not going to compromise. We eliminated all forms of collective bargaining. We introduced a measure last week, a measure that I ran on during the campaign. If anyone doesn't know what's coming, they've been asleep for the past two years. Ohio, Dennis Kucinich for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Governor Walker, you said the union leaders agreed to the financial cuts, but then you blamed the local unions for not following through on these pledges. Uh, that's because you refused to drop your demand to strip workers of collective bargaining rights that had nothing to do with the budget, and uh, refused to negotiate and rejected the union's offer. Now, Governor Walker, if the unions in Wisconsin agreed to the financial cuts you sought, I don't understand how this can continue to be characterized as a debate about state budget deficits. This is supposed to be a hearing about state municipal debt. I don't understand how repealing collective bargaining rights for public workers shows us anything about state debt. Let me ask you about some of the specific provisions in your proposal to strip collective bargaining rights. First, your proposal would require unions to hold annual votes to continue representing their own members. Can you please explain to me and members of this committee how much money this provision saves for your state budget? That and a number of other provisions we put in because if you're going to ask if you're going to put in place a change like that, uh, we wanted to make sure that we protected the workers of our state so that they had a right to know what kind of value they got out. It's the same reason we gave workers the right to choose, which is a fundamental American right, the right to choose whether or not they want to be a part of a union and Would whether or not the they question, went up to a thousand dollars. How much money does it save, Governor? Just that particular part doesn't save any. Okay, in that's the same, right. In the same way that that's if you, the point. If it you read the federal has budget, no effect I'll whatsoever. answer your I'm question. I'm my time. It obviously had no effect whatsoever on the state budget. I want to ask about another one of your proposals. Under your plan, you would prohibit employees from paying union member dues from their paychecks. How much money would this provision save your state budget? It would save employees up to $1,000 per year they could use to pay for their pension and their health care contributions. Governor, uh, it wouldn't save anything. There are minor administrative costs, if any. It's obvious what the real intent is here. And it's I'll to give workers it a right. It's to give the workers the right to choose. I'll back it up, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Right here from the state of Wisconsin's Legislative Fiscal Bureau, this is a nonpartisan state budget agency, much like the Congressional Budget Office. The Bureau was asked to identify provisions in the governor's uh, bill uh, that are non-fiscal, non-fiscal policy items that have no state fiscal effect. This letter confirms the obvious. 
that Governor Walker's effort to repeal the rights of state workers is a non-fiscal, non-fiscal policy item. No effect on the state budget shortfall. I ask unanimous consent that this letter be included in the record. Reserving the right, we'll inspect it and plan to include it in the record. That's unusual. You would reserve the right to object. Uh, uh, the gentleman, would, gen the I gentleman, would, uh, I, 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 the gentleman will time. suspend. Uh, hold the time. We we fully expect to include it in the record because it's not a publication that is widely distributed. We simply would like to receive it, and as soon as it's been uh, quickly vetted during this hearing, it'll be accepted. In, uh, that's that's a consistent policy from both sides. I'd like if to respond. In yes, the 14 sir. years that I've been on this committee, I've never had a chairman reserve the right. Uh, to object to putting an official document in the record that was central to the to the purpose of this hearing, determining whether or not you stripping collective bargaining rights, Governor, is a financial is issue or not. It's not. It's a political issue. That's what I'm proving. Yeah, gentlemen, the gentleman is incorrect. Chairman Waxman did it repeatedly. In most cases, just as here, by the end of the hearing, items which were not part of widely distributed uh, documents were accepted. I expect to do the same, and I would work with the gentleman to get it done before the end of the hearing. Uh, the gentleman may continue. Well, I, I've just made it a matter of public record anyway. Uh, the, title, the title of this hearing is Choice or Necessity. I think that what we've been able to demonstrate here is that the attack on collective bargaining right, uh, rights is a choice, not a budget issue. Uh, there are budget issues as well that need to be addressed in, in Wisconsin. Uh, for example, uh, according to the National Nurses United in U.S. states facing a budget shortfall, revenues from corporate taxes have declined $2.5 in the last year. In Wisconsin, two-thirds of corporations pay no taxes, and the share of state revenue from corporate taxes has fallen by half since 1981. Uh, that's published in The Nation by John Nickel. I won't ask to uh, submit it by unanimous consent. And also, um, in the Real News Network, they have a report here that points out that the short budget, uh, the budget shortfall of 137 million in Wisconsin, uh, could have been covered if the state had just kept going its uh, state legislated estate taxes, which they let expire uh, after uh, 2008. Uh, also points out that if they had gone on to collect the estate taxes from their wealthiest citizens, they could have paid down the debt. Now. I just want to say in conclusion, Mr. Chairman, that, that we really are here at the center of a great debate over the purpose of government, whether there is such a thing as a public sphere with public servants who perform duties on behalf of the public using resources that belong to the public, or is government going to be auctioned off to the highest bidder, to corporations who, who privatize and inevitably drive up the cost of government, drive up the cost of services, drive up taxes. That's where this debate is headed nationally. I think that uh, Governor Walker has inadvertently uh, done a public service by exposing the extent to which this mindset of privatizing what is the public sphere, bringing this issue to the forefront. So thank you for being here, both governors. I guess that's a thank you. Uh, the chair now recognizes. chance we'll ever get to be a completely red state and work on these unions oh, yeah. and become a right to work? Well, we'll in fact, the what big can thing we do to help you? Well, we're going to start in a couple weeks with mm -hmm. our budget adjustment bill. The first step is uh, we're going to deal with uh, collective bargaining for all public employee unions because right. you divide and conquer. 